Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and I'm a longtime Autodesk Eagle user who is currently in the process of trying to learn KiCad. I've used this circuit by Serge Cherepnin called the dual processor. Well, actually, this is half of a dual processor, so I guess you could call it a single processor. Anyway, I've adapted it to the tangible waves modular format, and I'm using that as my test case. In a previous video, I documented my attempts to learn schematic entry, and in another, I talked about the details of the design, and here I'll try PCB layout. I haven't done this before, so you're getting my first impressions. Let's see, here's something that looks like a PCB. Let's see what happens when I click on it. Okay, so, oh, I need to assign footprints to parts, I guess. Okay, let's see, there's this thing here that says edit symbol fields, bulk edit fields. Let's click on that. Wait, what's going on here? Do I have two R6s? And R6 says value R3. Something's weird. Let me go fix whatever's going on here and I'll be back. Okay, I got all of that cleaned up. Let's see, it looks like on a couple of these I accidentally assigned something already. All right, so let me look at this diode. I'm going to click library. Huh. Let's see. I guess that's okay. Okay, let me look at my transistor package. I guess that's okay too. And actually, let's rename the chips. Let me make this U1. And we'll make this chip here U2. Oh, I want to make sure this is U2 also. Hope that doesn't break anything. Huh. Let me make this U2. Hope it realizes that these are all the same chip. Okay, let's pick the footprint for the MAX 1044. What? Why is the diode footprint showing up? Okay, maybe this isn't the right tool for this. Let's cancel. Let's try this assign footprints. What's going on here? Okay, let me scroll down to the max 1044. Okay, how about footprint filter? What does this claim to do? Use footprint filters. Defined by the symbol, list by pin count, list by library. Let's just stick with whatever the symbol says. Wait a minute. <laughs> what? Why am I getting all of these things? Why am I getting a dip 12? That's absurd. Okay, maybe I have to click both of these. Okay, so I had defined by symbol and defined by pen count. Defined by library. What if I just click on everything? Huh. Let's see if I click on these. Why is it not showing it to me? Let's right click. Oh, view selected footprint. Wait, what is this? This is not the appropriate footprint for that part. Why is it showing it to me? Okay, let's look at this one. No, that's not related to that part at all. What? No, 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 no. Okay, let's try this one. View selected footprint. Okay, this looks reasonable. Long pads, what are long pads? Oh. Long pads are those sorts of things. I've got a surface mount version. Okay, so the version without the socket looks like this. The version with the socket looks like this. It has this outline here. All right, so let's go with this symbol here. I like that. Apply, save schematic, and continue. Now, do I always need to do that for this to stay? Okay, let's do the same thing for the 358. Yeah, why do I need to click these things up here? The symbol should already know what are the possible things. All right, let's see. We decided that we liked the dip. Okay, so let's take a look at that. No, 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 not this. All right, how about this? Let's view that. Ah, okay, I like that. We'll go with that. Double click. All right. Actually, did I use the socket here? No, I don't want the socket version. I want this version. All right. Apply and save schematic. Okay. What about connectors? Input connectors. Oh, this is a lot of stuff. 
Now, I don't like the fact that I have to say view selected footprints. What I want to do is I just want to click on this and have arrows go up and down and have the footprint keep changing so I can look at a bunch in a hurry. Is there a place where I can do that? So let me go to the schematic and just click on the part. All right, so let me click on footprint here and I'll click on the symbol and let's apply footprint filters. Of course, I want that filter by pin count. Of course, I want that too. Let's open something up. Oh, okay, this is doing what I want. Why can't I do that in the other tool? Okay, I'm gonna look at a bunch of symbols here and find one I like. So that was a lot more convenient than using this Assign Footprints tool. Let's see now, if I look here, yes, I see it's been assigned, but when I'm in this tool, I can't look at stuff as easily as when I was just doing it on the schematic. So forget that tool. Okay, I need a header for the power. Okay, I like this. All right. Okay, what about electrolytic caps? Let's go to my library and let me add the keyword radial to my filter. Sure, how about 2.5 millimeter spacing? And these tend to be pretty thin. I think five millimeters should be okay. All right, now I want to apply this to my other capacitors and I wanna do that easily. Okay, let me try the assign footprints tool again. And sorry if you hear the dryer in the background. Let's see, where are my electrolytic capacitors? Ah, can I copy this and paste it? Oh, look, I can paste it. Oh, but I don't want to paste it there. I want to paste it to C4, C5, C6, and C7. Actually, let's see, can I select a whole bunch and then paste a whole bunch? Ah, there we go. Okay, I like that. I can see how this is useful now. I still think it should show you footprints over here if I click on them without having to right click. Let me pick a resistor footprint. Okay, I want through hole parts. And let's see, let me add axial to my search terms. Let me also add horizontal. Bah, let me see if I can spell horizontal. All right, let's see, I have more or less eighth watt resistors. Here's my quarter watt resistors, half watt. Okay, I think this one is too short. This one is too long. Let's go with the Goldilocks thing and say this one is just right. Okay, and now let me go into that tool up here. And now if I scroll down, I should be able to take this and copy it here. Now, what I should have done is when I put down that first resistor when creating the schematic, I should have chosen the footprint then. And then every time I copied that resistor to put more resistors on the schematic, it would have kept the appropriate footprint. Live and learn. Wait, where did my power header go? Did that not stick? Let me poke at my power header again. Okay, power header, power header, connectors of this sort. We have horizontal, Vertical, let's pick this one. Okay, I need a footprint for my bypass capacitors. Okay, this is just a weird design choice on the part of KiCad. Why is this box even here? Why would I want to try to map a battery or a buzzer beeper <laughs> footprint to a capacitor? Yes, apply capacitor filters through hole. Okay, so we're going to look for axial capacitors. I just kind of need a generic capacitor footprint. Okay, these 2.6 millimeter diameter footprints, those are on the order of the size of the resistor footprint. So let me stick with those. And let's see, I used a 10 millimeter pitch for the resistors. And I wanna go with something slightly smaller for the capacitor. And the way I tend to design PCBs is I don't pay a whole lot of attention to the capacitor footprints. I sort of pick one. And then when I'm building the PCB, I just sort of bend pins and fit things in as needed. 
it's not very elegant, but it works. If I was working at a company making a professional design where we're picking different capacitors that had different footprints, I would, of course, use the appropriate footprints. But I'm going to assume that people might have all kinds of different sizes capacitors lying around in their drawers, and they'll just kind of make it work. Okay, let me copy that footprint over to the other bypass capacitor. And I should say local bypass capacitor. Now I need to choose the footprint for the potentiometers. Oh, symbol to footprint links have been modified. Save changes, yes. Please save changes. Okay, let me click on the potentiometer here and let's see what kind of footprints we have. To start off with, we're gonna want through hole. And there's a lot. Actually, let me first search for a vertical and close the surface mount. Okay, so Tangible Waves uses RK09. Oh, let's see. What if I take out vertical? Just say RK09. Wait, come back, come back, come back, come back. RK09. Oh, so it calls those horizontal? No, 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 no. I want these mounted vertically. I want these kinds of things with the little tabs. Let's see, this Borns PTV09 looks similar. Okay, PTV09. Ah, here we go. Let's see, there's a horizontal version and a vertical version. Okay, let's go with that. Yeah. And let's once again go to this tool, and we'll take that and copy it to our other potentiometers. And I think that is all of the parts assigned. Oh, before I go back to the PCB, I should probably do an electrical rules check. There's a check mark here. Electrical rules checker. Okay. Run ERC. Input power pin not driven by any output power pins. Input power pin not driven by any power pins. Okay, first let's check these jumper two pin not connected. Oh, okay, that's fine. Global label not connected anywhere else in the schematic. Okay, that's a problem. Let's see. This one here. Oh, what is going on here? Okay, I need to check that. Power pin 1. Pin not connected. U1 pin 7. These are okay. Let's see. How do I mark something as being okay? Exclude this violation. Let's say I don't want to necessarily exclude that for everything, but I'm going to say exclude that particular one. Okay, let's see. So this one's fine. Exclude it. This one's fine. Can I just hit delete? No. Okay. Let's see. That one's fine. Exclude this violation. Pin one, not connected. Yeah, we can exclude that violation. Exclude this violation not driven by any output pins. Okay, I guess that's part of the not connected. So we'll say exclude this violation. All right, input power pin not driven by any output pins. What is the problem here? I'll be right back. Okay, apparently KiCad wants you to tell it what the power supply pins are using something called a power flag. So let me find a power flag. Ah, telling it where the power comes from. All right, so I guess I'll put a power flag here, and I'll put a power flag over here, and we'll connect this here, and we'll connect this here. Oh, that's kind of ugly. I click this type M to move. Move that down there. M to move. Move that over here. Now let me try to run that electrical rule check again. Run ERC again. Okay, input power pin. What is it complaining about now? Oh, the ground. So the ground also needs a power flag. Really? That seems kind of silly to me. Okay, so how about, let's see, to make things clear, what I'll do is I'll grab this. Type M to move. Whoop, I meant to move the whole thing. Come on, move, 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 move. All right, no, come back up here. Move, 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 move. All right, so let's copy that power flag again. 
I'll stick it here, move this over here, and we'll route this here. Okay, now let me run the electrical rule check. Oh, and I forgot, having start, clock, and stop not connected to anything is fine. That's part of the tangible waves power connector, and I want to have this as part of a template I'm going to make for my students. But here, nothing else actually uses those, so that's okay for this schematic. So I'm going to say that we can exclude this, exclude this, and exclude this. And now if I hit run ERC, it should be happy. All right. Okay, let me hit that board button again. Switch to PCB editor. Let's see. I should be able to update things. Update PCB from schematic. Let's see, replace footprints with those specified in the schematic. Okay, this whole thing makes me nervous. I'll tell you why in a second. Update PCB, close. Okay, here's all of my parts, which I'll stick over here for now. Let's take a general look, see at what this looks like. Ah, there's a bunch of parts. So what makes me nervous compared to using Eagle is it looks like these are separate programs and I have to explicitly update the schematic if I change this PCB or vice versa or something like that. In Eagle, it's really just one program, and you always have your PCB and your schematic up always, all the time. If you close one or the other, then you instantly want to just quit the program without saving because you'll get infinite confusion. And in Eagle, when you have both your schematic and your PCB up, if you change anything on one, it updates on the other. Here it looks like I have to do that manually, which makes me nervous, but I could get used to it. I originally planned to actually start the PCB layout in this video, and I said something like that at the beginning of the video, but I've been editing this as I go, and I think I'm around 17 minutes, which I think is plenty for a video. So I'll stop here and call it something like assigning footprints in KiCad, and I'll try the PCB layout itself in another video.